Audicate. Listen and learn. Welcome students. Today we are going to learn Indian Constitution at Work. Textbook in Political Science for Class 11th. Chapter 1. Constitution, Why and How. Introduction. This book is about the working of the Indian Constitution. In the chapters that follow, you will read information about various aspects of the working of our constitution. You will learn about the various institutions of the government in our country and their relationship with each other. But before you begin to read about elections, governments, and presidents and prime ministers, it is necessary to understand that the entire structure of the government and the various principles that bind the institutions of government have their origin in the Constitution of India. After studying this chapter, you will learn Times what a constitution means Times what a constitution does to the society Times how constitutions govern the allocation of power in society and Times what was the way in which the constitution of India was made Why do we need a constitution? What is a constitution? What are its functions? What role does it perform for a society? How does a constitution relate to our daily existence? Answering these questions is not as difficult as you might think. Constitution allows coordination and assurance. Imagine yourself to be a member of a reasonably large group. Further imagine that this group has the following characteristics. The members of this group are diverse in various ways. They have different religious allegiances, some are Hindus, some are Muslims, some Christians, and some perhaps profess no religion at all. They are also varied in many different respects. They pursue different professions, have different abilities, have different hobbies, different tastes in everything from films to books. Some are rich and some are poor. Some are old, some young. Imagine further that members of this group are likely to have disputes over various aspects of life, how much property should one be allowed to own? Should it be compulsory that every child be sent to school or should the parents be allowed to decide? How much should this group spend on its safety and security? Or should it build more parks instead? Should the group be allowed to discriminate against some of its members? Every question will elicit a variety of answers from different people. But, for all their diversity, this group has to live together. They are dependent upon each other in various ways. They require the cooperation of each other. What will enable the group to live together peacefully? One may say that perhaps members of this group can live together if they can agree on some basic rules. Why will the group need certain basic rules? Think of what would happen in the absence of some basic rules. Every individual would be insecure simply because they would not know what members of this group could do to each other, who could claim rights over what. Any group will need some basic rules that are publicly promulgated and known to all members of that group to achieve a minimal degree of coordination. But these rules must not only be known, they must also be enforceable. If citizens have no assurance that others will follow these rules, they will themselves have no reason to follow these rules. Saying that the rules are legally enforceable gives an assurance to everybody that others will follow these, for if they do not do so, they will be punished. The first function of a constitution is to provide a set of basic rules that allow for minimal coordination amongst members of a society. Activity Enact the thought experiment of this section in the classroom. The entire class should discuss and arrive at some decisions that would apply to everyone for this entire session. The decision could be about Times how would the class representatives be chosen? Times which decisions will the representative be able to take on behalf of the entire class? Times are there some decisions that the class representative cannot take without consulting the entire class? Times you can add any other items to this list, collection of common kitty for the class, organization of picnic and trips, sharing of common resources, as long as everyone agrees to it. 
make sure that you include those subjects that have led to any differences in the past. Times how to revise these decisions in case you need to. Times write down all these decisions on a paper and put it up on the notice board. Which problems did you encounter in this decision? Were there differences among different students? How did you resolve these differences? Did the entire class gain something from this exercise? Specification of decision-making powers A constitution is a body of fundamental principles according to which a state is constituted or governed. But what should these fundamental rules be? And what makes them fundamental? Well, the first question you will have to decide is who gets to decide what the laws governing the society should be. You may want rule X, but others may want rule Y. How do we decide whose rules or preferences should govern us? You may think the rules you want everyone to live by are the best, but others think that their rules are the best. How do we resolve this dispute? So even before you decide what rules should govern this group you have to decide, who gets to decide? The constitution has to provide an answer to this question. It specifies the basic allocation of power in a society. It decides who gets to decide what the laws will be. In principle, this question, who gets to decide, can be answered in many ways in a monarchical constitution. A monarch decides, in some constitutions like the old Soviet Union, one single party was given the power to decide. But in democratic constitutions, broadly speaking, the people get to decide. But this matter is not so simple. Because even if you answer that the people should decide, it will not answer the question, how should the people decide? For something to be law, should everyone agree to it? Should the people directly vote on each matter as the ancient Greeks did? Or should the people express their preferences by electing representatives? But if the people act through their representatives, how should these representatives be elected? How many should there be? In the Indian constitution, for example, it is specified that in most instances, parliament gets to decide laws and policies, and that parliament itself be organized in a particular manner. Before identifying what the law in any given society is, you have to identify who has the authority to enact it. If parliament has the authority to enact laws, there must be a law that bestows this authority on parliament in the first place. This is the function of the constitution. It is an authority that constitutes government in the first place. The second function of a constitution is to specify who has the power to make decisions in a society. It decides how the government will be constituted. Audicate. Listen and learn.